I'm gonna pay my rent. All these bills. Affleck. Oh, Affleck. And they pay you cash in just one day. See how Affleck helps cover everyday expenses at Affleck.com. It starts with play. Now, new discoveries take shape. Whether it's learning triangles or learning to try again. Build each bright moment with the shape sorting wagon from Mega Blocks. Build them up. All are ready to dance until you are dead. And
the thrift store uh, oh, video. I know. I know what you're gonna talk. You go to thrift store and you find a nice old black t-shirt. Talk to him. You're gonna get that wash. Talk I to always him. talk about the wash, the specific wash. A lot of brands that try to do this, very, very hard to do. What? It's almost like you can only find it from a thrift store because because of the age. You can't mimic it. You the can't smell. Just, you can't just. Did you realize how many times you have to wash that thing yeah. to really yeah. look like that? Exactly. Not, not even like how many times, just how many years you have to have this. You know what I'm So there's this wash right now. It's mm -hmm. kind of like a. It was saying like an aged black wash. You can't do it from almost a ashy. Almost like an ashy Faded. charcoal. Yeah. This wash that you're talking about. Go ahead. So I actually found this at a thrift store. Uh -huh. Okay, the hard Davis shirt smelled and looks the age. Okay. <laughs> uh, but it's actually extra large. Yeah. But it's been washed so many times throughout the year, it's kind of come down to a medium large. Yeah. But the main thing I like about it is that you can actually flip it inside out and you can actually have a nice black wash vintage wow. tea. Okay. Something that Jerry Lorenzo kind of made, uh, I guess, uh, popular. For sure. Okay. You know, with that photo shoot that he yeah. did with the uh, track pants, I would say that was when it was like, okay, yeah. like this is what it is. Yeah, and you would think that it's kind of silly to wear an inside out shirt, yeah. but you actually get the details from the seams and all that kind of popping out. It's like, you know, you don't really want to wear a black t-shirt. That kind of screams a little bit too, uh, too uh, casual. This one okay. has a little more style. Yeah, a little bit more style gives it that, like, you know, that vintage look and everything. Yeah. I mean, if you look at Fear of God, mm -hmm. for 300 bucks, they're offering inside out t shirts. That's crazy. Like, those are t shirts that are flipped inside out and they are sold to you guys. We're saying, you know, for free, you can just go to a bitch's store and you don't even have to care about the, uh, you know, the logo on the uh, chest area or anything. You flip it inside out. There you, you go. Know, and that's I saw you, want. That's I saw you want. do it before and you cut the uh, tag yeah. and there you go. Like, you have Ooh, a inside weasel. out tee. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Hey, they don't call them the weasel for no yeah. reason. Yeah. 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 That's where I saw it from. Yeah, for sure. Wears this one vintage shirt all the time, and you can see you can see the design. Yeah, yeah you can yeah, see the yeah. underneath it. So that's why I got it. All right, right, we swing this over to Big Boy Johnny. What about you, bro? Mm. You know, for me, man, it's hard to find the right. Cause I got short legs, man. Okay, it's hard to you. find the right cut for shorts. Uh huh. I like to wear it above my knees, but not too high above my knees. Cause you're so, saying the uh, the width is right. Yeah, sometimes yeah. the length ain't right. Mm -hmm. Not only that, it's kind of like when you get shorts, you want a little bit more of that frayed look. Okay. So what I like to do is buy sweats that are like the material. Got it. And then I like to copper myself. There you, you go. Hey, large, extra large. Things are gonna, gonna, gonna get big and long. They make it look. <laughs> And you're not the you're tallest. Right. You're not the tallest guy in you know the room. <laughs> so when you wear extra large shorts, you want you know above the knee. You have to get that. Very respectable uh, response. I love that. Keep working on it. Not only that, I mean just a little curveball. Yeah, yeah. You got a girlfriend, right? I had to actually take some of my old shirts that I have Ooh. that don't fit me no more, it's still stylish, and I actually crop them for it. So recently, I had an old Nike shirt. Oh, you you put throwing yeah. out all the tips yeah. in there. Yeah, so okay. just, just if you want to get a little brownie points, you know, <laughs> all right. You know, I actually took a Nike Lab shirt I had, uh -huh. didn't fit me the way I wanted it. The rule you're kind of offering is to cut it. just anything yeah. that you feel like isn't going to be your right. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> I was raising my hand like I'm trying to speak next. So basically, basically, Johnny, your rule is to just uh, utilize the distress, the crop look when For it sure. comes to either shorts, pants, or shirts. That's, yeah. Scissors can go a long way. It goes a long way, and it gets that little frill of the curl that you like. You know what I really like about what you just said is sometimes when you have a pair of sweatpants, yeah. what I don't like about them is like that seam can look a little bit too perfect. You know what I mean? Like the fold is just too perfect, especially like in tech fleece shorts yeah, and exactly. everything. Exactly. I like, I like the rawness yeah. that you feel when you do cut it. Like, if you look at NBA players, man, yeah. they're always cutting their sweatpants yeah. to get that look. It gives it more like that DIY look, you know? Yeah, yeah it's not, DIY look. Yeah. perfect, you know? Yeah. What I, mean? I, mean, I did it recently with, the, with some yellow pair of uh, uh, Nike shorts. There you go. You know, I recently did that. The shorts fit fine. They're yeah. perfect. Yeah. I just wanted that raw edge look. Raw so edge I took off the seam, yeah. and then that gave me the, the, the nice cut off sure, look. For sure. So, you know, these are like uh, just some, like, I guess you could call them style hacks that you yeah. guys can yeah. do. To, and they're free. Kind of reminds me of when we used to talk about the distressing on the denim and everything. Yes. Like, we might have to bring another uh, DIY video like that again. Uh, yeah, I mean, that was pretty big. I still think distressing your jeans is not out of style. Yet. No, for sure. I don't that's, think it'll ever get out of style. That's something is so simple. I even just recently saw an ad that Goodwill got extra 40% off jeans right now. If you want to just go have some fun, get some ad and wash jeans and just bro, distressing yourself or something. Bro, like audience out there, go to the thrift store, right? Yes. Get yourself some denim. Yes. Just make sure you like the wash, distress them, and then go get them tapered to your uh, fit that you like. Yep. You got the perfect pair of jeans right Don't there. Not $300. Just yeah. make sure you like the wash, and also, that's you to go. Also, when it comes to jeans at the thrift store, the old, they're going to carry a lot of older ones, yep. and the older jeans have the best cotton. It's this thread, you know what yes. I mean? Like, there's the a thread. of threads coming out. It's I mean, like, no it's H&M for 21. Mm. Those ones are a little bit, <laughs> the stress game is not up to par. Yeah. You know?
know. So I've been talking about a lot of jeans a lot. Y'all got some coming out? Mm -hmm. Oh, you know. Oh, wow, you're just a plan of voice or an identical voice? No, just make sure you guys follow Witchy League Collections. Uh -huh. We are going to be rolling out new information on the next fall winter. Yes, sir. It's going to be bananas. A lot of new items. A lot of new items. Oh, okay. okay. All right, guys. That's pretty much it for how to up your style game. Shout out to Johnny. Shout out to Chan for offering what they are kind of doing right now. Let us know down in the comments below if you guys want more tips and advice like this when it comes to fashion mm -hmm. and sneakers. And until next time, we out. Peace. To travel is to live, both in your own skin and outside of it. Obviously, summer just ended, but everyone knows that fall is the best season when it comes to styling your clothes. Yes, sir. We're going to show you the variety of things for you guys to pick out. All right, you ready to get in there, Tim? Let's, Let's go. go. Alright guys, so one brand that I really like for the fall time is North Face. Kind of has that fall vibe to it. You know, they did the collaborations with Supreme pretty consistently. So you're going to get that brand recognition without having to pay for that Supreme stamp. This is a good purchase if you're trying to get that low-key hype beast item without really having to pay for it. So I just told the audience, you know, about the whole Supreme North Face collaborations. Yeah. We have the jackets right here. They actually use the 700s for their collaborations. I mean, what do you think about this? I mean, every year you can get a nice collaboration with North Face Supreme. The 700 jacket is like a classic poofy jacket. Uh -huh. It is a bit on the expensive side, but trust me, you're going to be warm. <laughs> it's going to last a long time. Hey, they have good warranty. If they got the Supreme, I think they would be fetching about a thousand on them. Really comfortable. They fit pretty much true to size. I would get a medium if I felt like I needed a layer, yeah. but this jacket is so poofy, you don't even need a layer. So the 700 jackets right here, a good purchase at the North Face store. vibe to them, like half windbreaker material, half sweatpants material, so for 79 bucks, these are pretty cool, you can rock them casually, you know, they're not too skinny, they're not too baggy, I was going to say, it's a nice switch up from your typical Nike tech fleece, or I'm not going to lie, for $79, I'm going to have to copy these, yeah, I'm going to have to copy these, too, so these are a good pick up, we'll definitely leave the link for you guys. We just got into pack some in, and right behind us, crazy amount of fog essentials right here. Yeah. They just dropped. What do you think about the fog line? I mean, not fog, essentials. What do you think about essentials line? Obviously, it needs to be done. Uh huh. Okay, I think what Jerry Lawrence is trying to do is separate, you know, the, the, the cheaper, kind of lower quality yes. essentials to like the real essentials of the good quality. It was getting a little bit confusing of like what yep. was what, right? So it's a little bit more clear of branding now. So you got essentials, it's plastered on the back of everything. I feel like the colors are a good switch up, especially for the essential. Line, usually it's black and white, uh -huh. kind of cool to see the colors. So we got these track pants right here. I really like track pants for the fall because they are pretty versatile. You can wear them in the summer and then bring them all the way into the colder weather. These are only 50 bucks. Kind of have that like Gucci vibe. You got this really nice paneling on the side. I mean, we might have to pick these up. There's a ton of colors here on PacSun. So I just tried on this PacSun branded denim jacket. Pretty affordable. Has a really nice slouchy look to it. I mean, if you're going to get this, make sure you guys size up because they do run kind of small. And this is a size uh, large. So recently, you guys know the kid collaboration. 
collaboration mm -hmm. with Coca-Cola, but this one is a little bit cheaper. This is pretty much a cheap alternative to that. I mean, looks pretty much the same. It's got the branding. Maybe the red is not the same uh -huh. as the kit and Coke. Maybe the quality is not the same. But hey, if you want a cheaper alternative to the kit and Coke collaboration, yeah. shout out to Paxson. That's hair and but this, this ain't it, but it's close enough. Uh, so right now, I am in Forever 21 for 19 bucks. They have some pretty clean flannels, a very classic pattern right here, navy white with the red. Forever 21 for 19 bucks. They have some pretty clean flannels. A very classic pattern right here. Navy white with the red. But I'll make me get this polo right here. You know, a lot of people are clowning me in the hype talk for wearing the polo. You know, I mean, he's rocking the whole Louis mm -hmm. Vuitton uh, suit, okay. but his slippers just look about three sizes too small for him. I'm saying I look like a 50 year old dad. Come on, don't make me get a second one. I'll do that. I'll do it. Uniqlo, you know, rolling out their fall winter stuff. They got the little nice moto jackets right here. You know, let me try this on. They have never carried a moto jacket out of thing. Okay, nice and soft so far. How much is this? 49 bucks on sale too. Let me see. Got the nice zippers right here. And you have zippers on the pockets. This is a size medium. Usually for the jackets, I like to size up. But this one seems to fit true to size. All right, so right now we're in the thermal section. You know, these are really good to wear underneath the flannel. Say if you still want to rock a flannel, but you got to stay warm. These are really good to layer underneath, and they're pretty low-key. And speaking of pretty thick essentials, they have these t-shirts. You know, I'm always talking about these in my videos and whatnot. And it is fall, so they are starting to roll out the fall winter color. I'm like, look at that nice pumpkin spice latte color right here. Uh, what, do you, what do you think about that color? This one right here is a hot cocoa. A hot cocoa? So you know, right now they are starting to roll out a lot of cool fall and winter colors. You know, if you guys want something hype, Still, they have the cause collaboration here that, I mean, as you guys can see, they probably quadrupled the inventory when it comes to how many they made. Yeah, I think from the first drop, they learned, you know, that uh, <laughs> a lot of people like this uh, collaboration. So yeah, they definitely stocked up the time. Yeah, they were like, you know, you know, resell this show to make money off our t-shirts? Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, so we got some good stuff. We'll see you guys back at the house. <laughs> All right, so we just got back from the mall, man. We gotta talk a little bit about fall, winter fashion. You know, the mm -hmm. biggest thing that comes to mind for myself is the colors, you know, the sure. vibe that you're going for, you know, the olives, the beiges, more of those neutral tones. Speaking of specific colors, there's a reason why I chose these all right, all right. this colorway. Nah, you can't okay. rock these in the summer, you no, know? No, you can't rock these in the summer. No, I feel like in the summertime, you're always rocking the white leather Vans old schools. You're sure. sometimes rocking the class in blacks. Yep. But these ones, these are strictly fall. It kind of reminds me of that cinnamon powder you put on the uh, latte right there, you know? Yeah. Like the little uh, flower on top. It's like a, a seasoned color. Yeah, you know yeah. What I mean? so, so these are really unique right here. I like the nice suede. Kind of yeah. buttery, actually. It's Very little... buttery. And we all know that when it comes to old school vans, they're affordable yes, for sir. only $60. $60 right there. And that's really important because when it comes to colors like this where you cannot rock all year round, mm -hmm. you don't want to spend a ton of money on those type of for items. Sure. Also, at Paxson, we picked up kind of like a flannel yeah. hoodie. What do you think about this? Man, I remember wearing this flannel right here and I had a supreme hoodie underneath. Oh, yeah. But it made me look a little bit too bogey, kind of, kind of chubby yeah. in a way. But the hoodie kind of attached to the flannel, you uh -huh. don't want to get that poofy kind of stocky vibe. For sure, because when you're rocking the hoodie underneath, the only thing you're trying to uh, accomplish is the hood right here, the hood. You're not trying to get the bulkiness of the work. <laughs> so the flannel with the built-in hood right here, really dope. You also got the cream drawstrings to really match that nice flannel pattern. This is pretty low-key right here. You yeah, know, it's very low-key. Crazy. The pattern, obviously, the color palette is a good choice, especially when you're going into fall and winter. So pretty much for 40 bucks, you're getting your bang for your buck because you're getting that hoodie look 
with the flannel. They had a ton of other colors as well. So Pack Sun, if you're looking for these, not a bad option. All right, so moving right along to this jacket right here. I mm -hmm. first brought it up in an essentials video for only 25 bucks on a sale. You're gonna get a reversible jacket. You got this fleece side right here. Mm -hmm. You got the windbreaker side right here. My, my, my thing is the colors. Yeah, the, the colors. colors are nice. You got a nice orange green. Uh -huh. Okay, and then you also got a nice charcoal gray. Yeah. To make it, you know, if you want to go a little bit neutral and kind of, you know, there casual, you go. Okay, you go in here. Do you want to do a little stylish? You go to green. Yeah, this is a nice gray right here. I like how it kind of has like those nice lines, gives it the more of that heathered gray for look. Sure, for sure, it's not like a blank gray. Exactly, but again, like you said earlier, for $25, you're basically getting a two for one jacket for basically two different occasions. Yeah, you know you're, I mean? so, they're not going to know you rock this every single day. Uh, so they're going to be like, yo, Rich. Got two jackets, yeah. man. You bought it. And for the audience carrying backpacks every mm -hmm. single day, obviously it folds up really, really nice. Yeah. I'm like, gets really tiny. You just stuff it in your backpack if you're not sure if it's gonna rain that day or not. So for 25 bucks, the Uniqlo Essential Windbreaker, water repellent, durable. I mean, man. retail on it is 50 bucks on sale for 25 bucks right now. So 50% off. Check it out. All right, next items up we have are from Forever 21. Ooh. Rich, you got a nice little stylish, trendy yes, jacket sir. with the panel with the red and the navy. I mean, Rich, what do you think? This is crazy right here i mean for 29 dollars this could easily be from a designer brand i was just gonna say it'll probably be up in the thousands i was gonna you know say I mean? like, this has to be one of the most quality pieces <laughs> oh, from their store yeah usually their stuff isn't really quality mm -hmm. but i mean you gotta look inside there's a mesh lining on the inside it feels pretty yeah. nice it doesn't feel super cheap no. and i really like that the blue and the red they're a deeper blue and red they're not like the tones are right yeah the tones tones are are point. and you gotta look at the piping the right piping. here the white part right i mean look the details on this jacket i, I could see why you could say that this is actually could be you know a higher exactly end, you know exactly. Grade. last item up we have is a nice good yes, quality sir. pocket tee from forever 21. it has this like cloth like material not mm -hmm. your regular t-shirt material my favorite part about it has to be the color it reminds okay. me of that Fear of God, God Gray is what they used to call it. It used to sell out in a ton of items in this color, and it really reminds me of that. Kind of has like a nice vintage wash. Uh -huh. It's really hard to come by, honestly. But man, Fair 21 nailed it down. All right, guys, that pretty much wraps it up for the items that we got in today's fall items that you need in your wardrobe video. Make sure to leave a comment down below if you guys want more videos like this. All the links will be in the description box mm -hmm. below if you guys want to buy the items. And that's pretty much it. Make sure you guys check out Tan's Instagram. And until next time, we out. Peace. All right, guys, thank you for checking out that video. We got a ton of upcoming fall and winter videos coming up for you guys, so make sure you guys subscribe. We even got a top 10 sneakers to get for the winter, so make sure you guys uh, stay tuned, and make sure you guys check out Chan's Instagram, and until next time, we out. Peace.
like my beasts. Nope, still not fun. So everyone hates high beasts. Even high beasts hate high beasts. If you don't know what a high beast is, it's that guy that flips a creature for the equivalent of a couple McDonald's bound deals and calls himself an entrepreneur. The guy that talks about hard work and says rise and grind, but really he's just waking up early to cop some supreme or wait in line for some yeast. I'm gonna give you three reasons as to why high beasts suck with two C's. It's gonna be arrogance, reselling, and irony. A high beast is the streetwear equivalent of that one guy that drives a really loud car. If you think you're flexing and impressing all these girls, but you're not. If anything, the only people that really care about stuff like that are guys. So basically, basically <laughs> impressing guys. Ooh. A big hoodie would probably run you a couple hundred dollars. So just because you dropped your parents' allowance to look like Fisher Friends, not food, doesn't mean you're cooler than everyone. When I say arrogance, it's because sometimes hype beasts be thinking they're the shit. And trust me, no girls that see you is going to think, Oh my god, he's wearing the new Yeezys. Oh my god, he better have some crap protect on those because I'm so wet. First of all, she got funny. Second of all, nobody is gonna say that. I mean, I mean, it's cool for Instagram, I guess. I mean, you get hella likes, but like, I mean, okay, let's be honest here, guys. Girls definitely look at your likes and followers, so I guess it helps with girls. Okay, let's clear here. You can only flex on Instagram for likes and followers because more followers equals more girls and more girls equals more respected women. Also, second brand names does not equal good taste. The only taste that you're leaving is that bad taste in your mouth when you wake up in the morning. Hype beasts are equivalent to morning breath. No, no, boy. Just because you floss your clothes doesn't mean you floss your teeth. Brush your teeth. Not your shoes. Basically what I'm saying is buying clothes doesn't buy you respect. You earn that by how many rare Pokemon you have, obviously, the same universal term. Next up, we got reselling. Resellers really be thinking that flipping a pair of Yeezys makes you an entrepreneur. Sure, you make some good profit, but calm down, Warren Buffett. You got lucky on some Yeezys, but don't be out here trying to say the grind don't stop because it does stop. It stops when Adidas decides it doesn't want to drop no Yeezys this week. And not even just that, but like if people that really want a certain item can't get it because resellers snag them first, of course it sucks major Costco sausage. Like you gotta pay double for something you actually planned on wearing because some guy decides that, quote, I don't know how y'all handle that 9 to 5 with those stupid eye emojis. Like go clock back into your McDonald's shift, bro. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I roll with that $5.20 piece all day, but just because you resell Jordan's does not make you Jordan Belfort. I know, you're probably gonna say I'm just salty that I didn't get the shoes I wanted. Then yeah, I am, what the hell? I gotta pay more for something because some guy gotta say rise and grind? I'm just trying to take some cool good pics and some shoes that I paid for, for retail, for my Instagram, at Christian Dy. I don't know if I mentioned that before, but my Instagram is at Christian Dy, you know, always. Okay, wait's over. Hype beasts suck, lastly, because the irony that ensues when they encounter one another. Like, hype beasts are the type to talk shit about a hype beast while being a hype beast. About a hype beast. See how stupid that is? Like, here's a real combo I overheard now. Really. Oh, Jordan? Yeah, that guy's such a hype beast, bro. Then he doesn't even know how to lace his Yeezys the cool way. By the way, can I borrow your phone so I can have more spots in the new Yeezys? You know, adidas.com slash easy. I want to resell more because I'm trying to savor those off-white Jordans. Grind don't stop. The grind don't stop, but you should. All right, so to wrap this up, the 20 piece for $5 and the dimes is always the move. Oh, wait, I mean, not just pick up. Just don't be a damn hype beast. Okay, thanks for watching the video, guys, and hopefully I gave you more hype beast awareness so you can spot and avoid them. Never turn hype beast. Not even once. Follow my Instagram and subscribe for some respect women tutorials and tweet at me memes. At Christian BYYT. Email me at frugalaesthetic at gmail.com and I will reply to anyone that says respect women in the comments. So make sure to drop that respect women comment if you respect women, respect women. But yeah, again, thanks for watching. Stay lit, respect women, but most importantly, fucking love you.
got these on an app. It might have been an Asian person. I don't know. <laughs>
say 14. I have like all types of sneakers. Not everyone is my field, but you know. But Victoria does work full time in the sneaker industry. My opinions are rooted by industry politics. So I think we've got two sneaker experts, and I'm excited to get into this game of over under. Let's, Let's go. go. School Jordan 12. Overrated. Underrated. I love the, the gray ones. Uh, everybody, if you guys have been watching live this week, you know, I uh, rock the gray ones. I like the gray ones as well. I think the wheat colorway is super overrated. I get it. We're in New York. It's one of the most iconic colorway colorways. But I think it's kind of corny for New York to have had the wheat colorway. Out of all the colorways, this is definitely the most overrated. At the 12 came out, you think that's all this was. It's a little different with the 12, but it's literally the same. Isaac, you guys are both from City. You just said these are underrated. It looks like a Tim, but well, right now I'd say Jordans aren't really like making their, you know, they're not really in too much in the game anymore. I'd say Adidas is really killing it. I mean, public school, like you can't go wrong with public school, but just the colorway itself, these are hard to rock in the street. The only reason that I cannot say that these are overrated is because I don't think that these are that hot right now. Are they overrated, underrated? The next shoe up in overrated, underrated is the Nike Talaria. Underrated. Overrated. This is probably one of my favorite runners on the market right now. So underrated, it's literally sitting in Nike outlets. It's out in the late 90s, it came back in 2016 and 17. It's just iconic and different from all the other runners out there right now. I don't even know this shoe, but I say it's overrated. I, like It came out before I was born, but you know, it is what it is. Come on, like... I mean, it looks like a tennis ball, don't you think? That's like, the point! Okay. <laughs> the kids just don't like it because it's not an easy Calabasas run. Exactly. There's Calabasas. no big influencer behind it. You know, overall, <laughs> I gotta say that these are, it's close, but these are underrated. I'm taking L today. Okay, next up, we've got the Supreme Sup Tempos. These are so overrated. I feel like the up tempos are a classic that should not be messed with or collaborated with. Like, did Pippin even agree to this? I think they're underrated. Like, I know that Supreme, everyone's doing it. They're classic, but you don't really see too many people rocking them down the street just because they're kind of hard to rock. If you're really feeling them, you gotta have the right fit. This colorway is definitely overrated because I really don't like this red colorway. But because I actually have the gold ones, I'm going with Isaac on this one. Hey! <laughs> Next up, we've got the Nike Air Force One Special Forces Edition. I'm gonna go with underrated. I know there there was hype behind these, but I feel like people didn't really understand the significance of around them. And also, they're super versatile and one of the only sneakers that you can really rock in bad weather. Well, not the only sneakers, the only stylish sneaker that you can really walk rock in bad weather and still be fine. I gotta say. These are overrated. These are like sold out everywhere. I don't know about you, but you're talking about wearing this out in, in the rain. Done it. I did it in the blizzard. This, this is suede. You, know, you want to mess up the suede? I think you could compare it to the Yeezy. I think that's what they're a little bit trying to get at. They're trying to go with that 750 style, but I mean, it's kind of biting in my time. No, these are so much more practical than the 750 and the zipper. Well, there's no zipper, but if there was a zipper, it would actually work. Is this shoe overrated or underrated? I gotta make it a tie. Nobody wins, nobody loses on this one because this is it, it, so debatable. Next up, we've got the Black Cement Jordan 3. Where are we going with? Um, underrated. I'm gonna go with overrated. Like, honestly, I really love these. These, these were, back in the day, these were my go-to. Like, if, if I were to pick, like, a J, either red ones or BC3s. It's an iconic shoe, obviously. It's a classic. But I'm going to go with overrated just because at one point they were reselling for like $800, especially with the Nike Air, probably like 1000 I understand the historical significance behind the shoe, I really do, but for the resale value, it's pretty crazy. Um, it's not, I don't think it's worth a few hundred in my opinion. Overrated, <laughs> underrated, uh, that's a tough one right now. You know what, I just.
just can't call a PC3 overrated. So if it's not overrated, it's gotta be underrated. Hey, <laughs> aren't you guys, we are coming close to some tiebreaker rounds because it's tied up 2-2. Two, two. We got the Yeezy 350 Boost V2. Are these overrated or underrated? These are definitely overrated, especially compared to the V1, which works 10 times better. They make your feet look abnormally big, first of all. And they're just not, they're not as comfortable as like an Ultra Boost. So paying almost a grand for some of these, absurd in my opinion. Isaac, what do you say? Um, I'm gonna say underrated, to be honest with you. There's a lot of hype around this, but one thing's for sure, people are flipping this more than they're wearing it. You don't see many people wearing it. Obviously, I've the seen zebras. moms and Williams were pushing their stroller. <laughs> <laughs> they they want to be like the King. They want to be like King. I gotta give the point to Victoria. I think the V2 350s are overrated. However, I will make an exception for the crew. Next up, we've also got a controversial hot take. Overrated or underrated on the Bape NMD. These are super overrated to me. I think Bape has done a lot of great collabs with different sneaker brands in the past, and this is not one of them. It, I feel like there was no creativity behind this. And for the for like over $1,000, that's just ridiculous for like a cloth shoe. I do watch like what sells, and I say these are not selling. I think they're too iconic and people want to just rather hold them than wear them. I think these are a little bit hard to rock, you know? First of all, I like this colorway a lot better than this one. Mm -hmm. But they look cheap. The build quality looks like really cheap. Yeah. Which, I, I think that's another reason why people are kind of sleeping on these. The print is iconic, but this shoe is certainly not iconic. <laughs> all right, I got to say this, because uh, everybody I see, especially wearing these ones, Love the Bape MMDs are definitely overrated in my opinion. Mm, they're sleeping on them. <laughs> <Isaac. laughs> you got a very interesting debate that Vic and Victoria in particular feel passionate about. We're talking about the Oxford Tan 350 V1. Completely underrated. I know there's so much hype around the V1, but this is by far the most underrated colorway. I think it's super unique and different, and it's really hard to make a shoe this weird nude color and make it look hot, and I think Kanye did a really good job. These are the worst colorways. <laughs> it's different. It's his favorite. They're avant-garde. Like, this is putting your, your feet in the sand, taking them out. Like, this is the same thing. I just can't agree with Victoria this time. All right, next up, we've got a also explosive shooting Nike Hyper Adapt. I say overrated. I'm going to go underrated. You really wear these? Like, th these are like a walking hazard. You, know? you plug them in, like, you plug in your phone, too. Phone. Shoe, but I would say that these are overrated. You guys, this is another big one. 